to another episode of Red Talks Live. I have a guest with me again. It's been a long time since I had a guest on the show, and that is Nick Bradley from Scale Up Your Business. Nick, say hi. Excellent, Nathan Pierce. Thank you very much. I'm honoured to be what the first guest for a long time. First so guest. I was, I, was, I was top of the list, obviously. Exactly. Now, I mean, you get you get. You get favoritism and priority here because we have known each other for a couple of decades and collectively across three continents now. Yes, we do. And actually, <laughs> I was with you recently, so I actually made the trip. So as we record this, obviously, we're in coronavirus hell. <laughs> and I managed to get to see you for a few days in San Francisco before literally being quarantined on the way back to the UK. So there you go. That's, that's got to give me some brownie points. That, that was crazy, our last catch up. We were meant to spend a few more days together, but they locked down San Francisco. So Nick quickly ran to the airport and I ran out of San Francisco back home up north. Um, yeah, that was yeah. interesting. So strange, tell us a little bit about, sorry, you good? I was gonna say strange times right now, strange times. But yeah. uh, you know, I'm feeling, we'll get into this I'm sure today, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about you know the future, even though Obviously, around us right now, there's lots of people struggling. So am I. You've got to look after that mindset, which is what this is going to be all about. But first, um, tell our listeners a little bit about what you do. You're a scale-up coach, mentor, expert, other Yeah, words. yeah. Uh, what, all what of those. <laughs> what is okay, that? so I'll give you a little, little bit of history. So I've spent the last um, 10 years working for private equity firms. So essentially... Um, you know, guys who go and buy um, businesses, try and um, create value, grow them, and then they sell them for a, a significant profit from what they paid. And what normally happens <clears throat> is you go into those businesses and, and they're, all, they're all quirky businesses. They're usually profitable. They can be, you know, run by an entrepreneur for, for a number of years, whatever else. Um, but they have their nuances. They have their problems. So I was the guy who would go into a business that was acquired by a private equity firm and I'd be the fixer. Um, you know, what's that movie? Who was the guy? Was it, was it, what was it? It was, it was like a Tarantino film with um, Harvey Keitel. I was like, I was like that dude. So I would go in, and and you know, it was one of the worst jobs in the world, Nathan, because it was. I turn up, and of course, everyone would know as soon as I walked into the building that I was the guy who was probably going to sack people. Oh. You know, literally, like you know, you could get you know death stares. But I did that for, as I said, a good part of ten years, and then over the last few years, I decided to do that more for myself. Um, so now I work with uh, entrepreneurs and business leaders of, of businesses that are sort of turning over sort of seven to eight figures and I help them through the journey of scale up and scale up is when you start to have to bring people in and lead them for the first time. It's when you have to start to bring processes and systems and all that sort of stuff and, and try and turn your business into something more predictable. Um, I go and help those, those founders, those, those CEOs to be able to build that machine ultimately so they can create value, ultimately so they can create wealth sell the business one day if that's what they want to do to create freedom for themselves and to live life on their terms. So your, your post kind of startup, you've, you've proven, you've got past that proving yourself stage and hence scale up being the next thing. Like you, you've, you've sorted out kind of where you're going from that initial startup experimental stage and you help people take that next step and really grow from what they've discovered. Yeah, and, and to build on that point. So startup, startup, you know, is around ideation. It's around you know, coming up with a product or a service that has a market fit. So there's a there's a an audience that you're trying to serve and there's a there's a problem that you can solve, right? So that's all fine. That's cool if you know you can do that with a few people in a shed, you know, pretty much what Google did. But if you want to create, if you, if you want to change the world and you want to create significant wealth for yourself, you have to start to build that out. And what happens is a lot of entrepreneurs who are very creative struggle with the scale-up stage because it's not what they started. You know, they have to change their identity to be successful. Often they have to learn how to be better leaders and more comfortable with themselves. And they have to change their, the way they think about things, their beliefs, their mindset, which I know we're gonna talk about. And some, some do it, some don't. I tend to sort of get involved and help guide those people through that. And it's called the wilderness sometimes, no man's land, struggle zone. Um, but I tend to, because I've done so much of it, I tend to be the person who helps at, in that sort of transition period of the business. That is an excellent um, background for everyone. And I highly recommend they follow your podcast after mine, obviously, because <laughs> amazing. Uh, yeah. But scale up your business. I mean, I, I recall you very early on in your podcast, you shot the number one in the UK business. 
podcast list. On yeah, that. I did. I was in the UK business charts um, on iTunes, which is now Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Um, you know, people ask me what happened because, because you know, I was above you know the Tim Ferrises of this world and the Gary V's and some of these kind of more iconic business um, leaders or business um, media personalities, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so I got to number one. I was there for about six weeks. I'm still in the top 50 on and off. It kind of goes up and down. I don't know how these things work. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what happened. So scale up your business is, is obviously around, you know, as it says on the tin, it's about business scale up and growth. But the thing that I've done differently, which I kind of understand now in, in hindsight, is I talk about who you need to be and the way you need to manage your own sort of leadership persona, your own psychology, your own emotions. I talk about productivity. I talk about energy. I talk about you know, those personal challenges and those personal questions that you have to ask yourself to be successful. And in between that, I talk about the mechanics. I talk about marketing. I talk about technology operations, all the things that need to be in place. But it's not really just a business podcast. It's about, as I said, it's about an entrepreneur and what they need to do and who they need to become. And I think because I've been quite personal, told my own stories within that, um, it's resonated with lots of people who are you know, either currently going through that same journey um, or uh, just having challenges, finding, finding issues and problems that they need some help with. So that's, um, that's, that's the perfect segue now into kind of <laughs> what we wanted to talk about today. Um, so when, when I first started looking into mindset and kind of that personality uh, and persona you have to adopt to really be successful and consistent um, about things, I, I remember it was like 10 years ago, I knew something was missing and I started reading loads of business books and all those kind of things. And, and every time I read one of these books, and maybe this is a bit negative me, shows probably the state of mind I was at back then, but I would read them and think, who are you from your entitled position to tell me that it's all about the way I think? Like, I, I remember the first time I, I read a couple of pages of Tony Robbins, uh, one of his books, and I was just like, is this what you're thinking about when you're buying your G6? And I realized only <laughs> more recently that actually, no, this isn't what they're telling me I should be. They are in their positions because of having the right mindset and they all started at a point at the beginning and have just been consistent and run that through is that a is that a kind of do, do you come across many people who have that same belief i just get being well, i was the same oh, i was the same i mean so so the story so you know i i, I gently told the private equity story um you know it, it wasn't a walk in the park it's pretty damn stressful going in there and you know i don't know how you do it other. you just destroy me yeah there's a really terrible movie with george clooney called up in the air where he basically goes around and does this and i was kind of that guy but but to answer your question so for years right back back when we knew each other back at sort of university days and stuff like that you know i knew about tony robbins and i was kind of interested in some of some of the stuff right because the whole idea around psychology and you know, human performance, you know, all the things that underpin that. I did a lot of sports, so I was interested in performance overall. So I read his books and did nothing, right? Just thought, same as you, what, you know, what a crock of crap this is, right? Um, and, then, and then I had this moment, I'll share with, share with um, the, the audience, where I was going through a pretty stressful um, transaction, private equity transaction, and I wasn't particularly um, nice at home, nice to be around for the kids, for my wife. And I remember going to bed one night and I literally, you know, I was, I was stressed as hell and I cracked all the teeth, like the three, three back teeth on, on this side of my jaw. And I woke up and it was all swollen. I didn't know, am I going to go to the hospital? Am I going to go to the dentist? What do I do? And I ended up going to the doctor and, and he said, listen, you've cracked it. You need to go to the dentist now. And I went and saw them and they said, well, listen, we can do some work on it. And it wasn't, it wasn't a major thing, but I was in a lot of pain and a lot of swelling. It was like I'd been punched in the face. And I suppose metaphorically, I had, <laughs> because because wow. I remember I remember getting up and I and I said to Carrie, I said I've got to change stuff, and I called a mate of mine who I knew back from school days, who was a bit weird and we all thought was a bit of an idiot, um, but he retired um, I think at 32 with 60 million pounds in the bank. Wow! So he wasn't much of an idiot. He actually was involved with Love Film, which is now sort of Amazon Prime. Anyway. So I called him up and I said, you know, take what happened because I need to change things. And he said, he said, Tony Robbins. And I had this kind of weird epiphany circle thing, which was, oh, you know, wow, this is, you know, perhaps now's the time. I'd always, it's always been in the back of my mind. I thought it was a bit stupid. Now I need to change things. Perhaps I need something. So what I did is I, I literally um, got onto Netflix and I watched a documentary. I think it's called I Am Not Your Guru. 
And then I, I said to some, Carrie, my wife, I said, listen, I, I've got to go to one of these events. I've been putting it off for years thinking, I don't want to spend the money, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, I went to Chicago. I jumped on a plane. There was an event literally three weeks post me having this, this experience. I jumped on a plane, went to Chicago, went to Unleash the Power Within. It was, I mean, I cried my eyes out for some of it. It was just mental. I totally changed my view on everything, came back, and now I've got seven separate businesses, you know, not all doing great in the current times, but you know what? Um, I would never have changed my identity and changed the trajectory of what I was doing had I have not um, embraced something like that to help me. And it was all about mindset. Wow. I, I really appreciate you sharing that very personal story, Nick. But I mean, what really hits me is that you, you, didn't, you didn't come from already being in some position. You didn't have inherit any businesses you you were you were running your own fitness business at university to just pay your way you were a personal trainer like you was. made this decision to be successful and it was through mindset that you are now doing more but you're not going to the hospital or the dentist anymore. No, 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 i'm happy well i'm genuinely you know we're saying beforehand you know as much as we're going through you know challenging times across the world right now and there's a lot of fear and uncertainty I'm really optimistic and that's not because I've taken some weird happy pills. It's just that, you know, I work on my mindset every single day. You know, I work on my psychology every single day. I know that how I think and therefore the actions I take as a result of that is going to define how much um, success I have, both achievement and fulfillment. And most people get stuck in this rut and therefore, you know, it's your question around, you know, is it, is it a load of crap? It's not a load of crap. When I, when I coach and I mentor businesses, 70% at least of the success of that business, I can say from the outset is going to come down to the psychology and the mindset of the, of the business leader. Wow. And so for my personal experience, um, as we're sharing with good mates, I don't think anyone's listening, are they? Um, <laughs> can, I, can I, just before, can I have some red wine? Cause it's like, I'm in the UK and right now it's 10 o'clock. Okay. So it is, yeah, that's, that's fair. It's just gone lunch here. Mm. Um, so, so you get, my, get the beer out. <laughs> my last job when I left, I, I was actually surprised how many people emailed me and they all said the same thing. Like, you know, I said, are you going? But, but they all couldn't understand why they, they didn't understand. And they all said, they all said the same thing. You had it made. And that was interesting. The way they evaluated what they thought having it made was because my mindset was actually in the worst place that I think it had been. And it wasn't just one thing. It wasn't, you know, uh, the, the, the physical place, it was my mind, just that, that's what was wrong, the way I was taking things on, perceiving things, and I had to change that. I was making huge amounts of money, I didn't want for anything, but I was miserable. So I walked away what, every, what, what many people considered to be the absolute dream job. I got to experiment on future technology, and I got to just think and come up with crazy ideas on my own and then see if I can make them work like for a tech person that sounds fantastic on paper but I didn't have the right mindset. So that ended up turning into just pressure that made me miserable, that made me constantly feel like I wasn't doing enough, even though I was doing really well. And I had to change that and I had to step out. And, and, and now we're in, in like right in the middle of the coronavirus and I got to find myself a job. I could, I've got so many things like weighing on top of me that I could just start adopting a victim um, mindset and just give in. But the only thing different now compared to a year ago when I, when I made that big change to, to work on myself and understand what it really takes to be happy and, and which, is, which is mindset, I'm totally, like you, I'm actually quite optimistic of where I'm going to be when I come out of this and that it's going to be in a much better place than when I came into it, which is why this channel has been relaunched, which is why I'm putting so much effort into it. I, I do at least three episodes every Sunday. I put together and I write down and I share things and I'm asking nothing for any of this. And it's great to hear from people how much it's helping them, the things I'm sharing. But you listeners out there, you have no idea how much me sharing and giving is and me serving is helping me in putting me in the yeah. right place that I feel despite everything being against me right now, I actually feel invincible and that it will all be fine. And I don't think, like you said, I, don't, I haven't had any happy pills. I'm not delusional. The first thing I did, I, I canceled Netflix, HBO. Like I went to ground. I started meal prepping like I was a poor student again. I've got 
three weeks of meals I've made. I'm getting a little bored of the same thing all the time. But I got all of my costs down to nothing. And I doubled down on what I can do, no matter what external forces are acting against me. And I just share what I know. So I have totally yeah. invested um, a, a sum of $9 for a G Suite account to host my Red Talks domain. And I've got my WordPress account. I'm actually going to start a GoFundMe listeners if you haven't dropped off already, because um, I need to pay for my WordPress account. So if you want to keep getting this stuff, um, I, I need to raise, I think it was like 200 and something dollars uh, to keep this thing alive. But everything for me has been mindset that I feel completely fine about what's going on. Well, th there's a whole heap in that. I mean, for, first, first and foremost, you know, you know, you're not going to be unemployed for long. You, know, you never have been. <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's a moment in time. But there's, there's a number of different things here. I mean, I'm thinking about kind of obviously people who, who, who watch this and just to take some learnings from it. So first and foremost, what I've been taught, and this is, this is something that I practice, is if you're grateful for what you've got now, even if it's tiny, um, you know, you're winning. Because because most people most people are out there and they're kind of thinking you know you know what 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 do I need to get who do I need to be you know in in the worst um, examples of that who can I step on to get there and they're the ones that are miserable you see this all the time you see because I I used to do a lot of running you know this and um, one of the races I did um, quite a few years ago now when my knees worked was um, was called Comrades it's a it's a, a long a long race it's a hundred something kilometers or eighty seven kilometer race in South Africa. And um, you run through all the world vision camps. So it's literally all the, um, all the kids who are, you know, they haven't got parents, they're, they're, they're essentially in these camps. And I mean, it's humbling. I mean, it's, as, I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm kind of, you know, getting goosebumps, I remember the experience. And um, I remember when I did this race, I stopped and I, and I literally tr I tried to engage with these kids as much as I could, you know, shake their hands. And they weren't asking for anything. They just wanted to get some attention. They're all smiling, they're all happy. They haven't got any, their clothes are ripped and dirty but they're, they're happy, right? So you got that, you see that, right? You know, these, these kids have got nothing, you know, and who knows what their future is, right? But they're happy, right? And then you see other people who are kind of rich, but they're miserable, you know, they're, they're trying to do things, that they're, they're chasing something that's whatever they're chasing, right? And, and the secret to the whole thing is gratitude. You've got to be grateful for what you've got. If you're grateful for where you are today, you're alive, you know, you've got a house, you know, we've got things going on, we've got opportunities, then that's the starting point. But most of the world, unfortunately, most people I certainly experience in what I do now and then don't, don't really connect with that in the way they should. Yeah, no, that's, um, that, that's, that's a great story that, that comrades run. I mean, yeah, how can we be <laughs> so whiny about this is all happening to me and it's, you know, why do, why do I deserve to be having this happen to me? And that's the victim mindset that, yep. that just, I didn't realize I was adopting it. That was me like a, a year, two years ago, three years ago. And I, I look back at that and I kind of cringe a little bit now and think, oh, what was the example I was giving to people around me? And I mean, I've got, I've got a 15 month old now. Do I want him to see me as that person? It, of course not. I, I want him to see, you, if anyone read the last episode, it was just a written one, there was no video. It starts out with a picture of him looking out this window because he no, desperately sorry. wants to go outside and he's miserable and he's 15 months old. He doesn't understand why he can't go outside. So I have to be the person that he needs me to be, not this whiny little, oh my God, I hope I can get a job. That's not going to get me a job. That's not going to get me a salary so I can feed him. Like that, that's pointless, pointless. I allowed myself five minutes when I found out that I was going to need to find a job and that like, like things are starting to fall apart, I allowed myself five minutes. I sat on the couch, cracked open a beer. Um, and I thought, Oh dear. And then I, I, I'd stop. I realized what I was doing. I was like, Oh my God, you're, you're going to just spiral now. And then I got out my dry erase marker and I walked into the vet, into the bathroom, uh, my mirror. That's, that's now my new whiteboard is that bathroom mirror. They're really good wrote, for that. Mirrors. I wrote down how, what I'm, the person I'm going to be when I come out the end of this. And that's what I see every morning. And that's what I see at night when I brush my teeth before bed as well. And that, that has been immensely helpful. That reminder, you know, seeing it twice a day, I go to the bathroom more than twice a day, but at least twice a day, <laughs> but at the start and the end of my day, at least I'm seeing that message. And I, I had not once kind of gone to that, that victim kind of place. Like I'm owning this and, 
And that's what really matters, like that, that approach, that mindset, right? Well, people, people don't realize, right, that everything, everything in life is programming, right? So, so I, did, um, I didn't finish it, but I, I, I started two years of a psychology degree before I went to my business degree. And I can still remember some of the elements of this. So that's why I have a kind of an interest in this stuff, right? And, um, and what it comes down to, and you're seeing it now, right? So as we, as we record this, people are kind of, you know, hoarding toilet paper. I mean, what the hell is that, right? I mean, seriously. You know, I can understand that not having toilet paper and having to use something else might be an issue, but let's be honest, it's, it's a massive fear, reptilian brain thing happening, right? So if you want to kind of, you know, you know prove or disprove what we're talking about, just watch what's happening right now, this kind of panic as a, as, you know, as a result of the epidemic, sorry, of the pandemic. So, so that's, that's our brains. That's how our brains are. Most people's brains are wired for this kind of fight or flight mentality right? That's how they are. So if you understand that, if you understand that's how most people are living their lives, they're making decisions in business in their life based on the same principles. It's not, mm. as, it's not as clear as what we're seeing now, because right now it's under the microscope, but that's how people are. So the way I look at it is, okay, if that's how we're programmed and that's what we're battling against, and we're also programming from, with conditioning and environment of how we've been brought up from our childhood and all that, the only way to change it the only way to change it is to reprogram, just like a computer. You've got to reprogram the body thing. And there are, there are strategies and techniques to do that. I do it every single day. I've got stuff written on my walls in my bathroom as well. One of my sayings, and you know this, is be grateful, be brave, have faith and show up. I say that every single day. And because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm programming myself to be able to push through any challenges. And I have challenges like you do um, because I know how to do it. I've, I've taught or I've been taught how to do it and it makes a fundamental difference. Awesome advice, Nick. Always great to, uh, to chat with you. And so there's one, there's one thing I want to leave our, uh, I guess with, I, I don't recall where you got this from, or maybe this is an, an original Nick is on this one, but um, uh, you, you told me once that you're the, you were the sum of the five people, the top five people you spend time with. And, um, that that makes a big difference it, it might it might suck a little at first but there are probably some people that you need to stop prioritizing in your life yep. um i'm not saying you're one of those <laughs> you're on the good list obviously like our chats well are, you know I'm, i've made it to red talks hey so you know i must be doing something right <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's your career today hey um but yeah. no it, that that's a big thing as well like like um yes be there for people who are struggling who are kind of stuck in that, that sort of victim mindset and are spiraling out of control, but also make sure that you've got people in your life that are, are um, that have the right mindset and are aligned to kind of the type of thinking where you want to get to as well. You can't just have one and not the other. You can't be all take and I only want to associate with people and leave the ones that might need you behind. And equally, you can't only immerse yourself with that victim mindset because it'll grab you. Um, so find a balance of the two things. And, um, that's one of the, like, one of the things you've told me that really stuck, um, that I started applying myself. You've articulated it really well. I mean, I, I, I talk about in terms of environments. So, so yeah, you're right. You, you are the sum average of the five people you spend the most time with. And, and simply what that means is if you hang out with people, obviously who are not ambitious or victims or whatever, you will naturally start to be like that. It's actually nothing to do with you. It's just the environment. So a couple of things I say is, you know, first and foremost, if you want to change yourself, change your environment. And the other way I sort of position that is, you know, if you're, if you're the most interesting person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So you've got to put yourself in a place where you're challenged and you grow, right? That's really, really powerful. And, and I, the way I do it a little bit is because, you know, you're not going to suddenly get rid of everyone. You know. Yeah. Dramatic. But, you know, what I'll do is I've just got different environments. I mean, every single quarter I try and go somewhere and, and hang out with people who are on a similar journey and a similar kind of um, trajectory to what I'm trying to do with my businesses. And it's amazing. You know, even for a few days of doing that every quarter, four times a year, I come back just energized. And that, that sort of intense experience sort of sets me up for the whole quarter. So then if I'm around other people who may not necessarily be in the same space, I, I still have the balance between those things. But I never used to do that beforehand. I used to hang out with the same people. And I wondered why I wasn't growing because, you know, I wasn't putting myself and challenging myself in the way I should.
Thing. No, that totally makes sense. Yeah, that's that's really cool advice. Well, uh, we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm glad you were able to join me at least with a glass of wine. It is late in your evening. So well, you know what? I didn't even scull it, mate. I've still got like a good couple of sips left. You can take the Australian out of Australia. Uh, how does it go? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, listen, mate, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me on uh, Red Talks. I hope um, some of my uh, ranting Australian advice has been helpful to people. Um, and yeah, absolutely a pleasure um, speaking to you as always, mate. I'm sure it has. Uh, thank you for your support and everyone out there. Um, I hope this is of useful use to you. If, if you want to chat, if you want to um, understand a little more about all this mindset stuff, I'm, I'm here. Nick's there if you're in the right time zone. Um, okay. I'll share his details in the, in the post. And uh, yeah, awesome. Thanks for listening.